In this episode, we're revisiting music rights for podcasts, especially when it's a podcast about music. Be right back. Welcome to another episode of Legit Podcast Pro. I'm Gordon Firemark, the podcast lawyer. I help creatives and business people in the podcasting industry to cover their legal bases and protect themselves and the things that they create. And in this short weekly podcast show, I offer you legal tips, information, and strategies and answer your questions so you can grow your podcast like a pro. And today I received this friendly email from a newsletter subscriber and customer of mine. Ron wrote in with this question. He says, thanks for all the helpful content you've been creating and for the questions you've answered for me about my travel podcast a few weeks ago. I have another question for you if you're willing to tackle it, if you haven't already. I think many of your followers would be interested in it, so here it goes. Now, this is a question I have tackled before, but it it bears repeating, so glad to do it. For years, he says, I've wanted to start a podcast that reviews my favorite musical artists and their albums. I want to talk about specific albums and, as a musician myself, discuss what particular elements of that album lyrics, tone, vocal quality, chords, and so on, I think are especially noteworthy. But to do it right, I'd want to be able to play short clips. For example, if the guitar player uses an echo box in in a session, I want to say, hey, listen to this exactly, this episode, this section, exactly what I'm talking about. So my specific question is, having said all that, I've been too afraid to, to do this because I have a feeling I'd get sued immediately due to all the Byzantine rules about copyrighted music. How could I do something like this without breaking the law? Is there any sort of rule of thumb where I can use a certain percentage or length of a song for analysis? Or is this just a legal quagmire not worth wading into? And on a side note, he says there's already a few podcasts that kind of do this. Now, I'm not going to name the particular show he's referring to, but he wants to know how do they do this legally? Are they getting specific rights to every second of audio for everything they do or what? I don't have the time and the budget to do that, he says. So here is what I told Ron. I said, listen, Ron, I'm not familiar with that specific show, so I can't tell you how or whether they are legally using music clips. What I can tell you is that the kind of show you propose is very hard. (laughs) Excuse me. What I can tell you is that this kind of show that you propose is very hard to do legally as a podcast. It is necessary to fully license both the musical compositions, that's from the publishers and songwriters, and the masters, the recordings from the record company for every single clip that you use, unless there's a legal excuse or defense available. Now, the most likely defense that might apply is something called fair use. And I've done explainers on this before. You can go to firemark.com slash fair use or search my name and fair use on on YouTube and you'll find my explanations. I'm going to do a little bit of it here as well. The trouble is, with fair use, it is a case-by-case determination that has to be made for each clip in each episode. It's a somewhat complex four-factor analysis, and the only way to be sure your conclusion is correct is to litigate the question at a trial. So here is what fair use, Section 107 of the U.S. Copyright Act of 1976, has to say about fair use. It's 17 U.S.C. Section 107, Limitations on Exclusive Rights, colon, fair use. Here's what it says. It says, notwithstanding the provisions of sections 106 and 106A, the fair use of a copyrighted work, including such use and reproduction in copies or phono records or by any other means specified by that section for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, including multiple copies for classroom use, scholarship or research, is not an infringement of copyright. So in determining whether the use made of a work in a particular case is a fair use, the factors to be considered shall include, number one, the purpose and character of the use, including whether such use is of a commercial nature or is for nonprofit educational purposes. Number two, the nature of the copyrighted work. Number three, the amount and substantiality of the portion used in relation to the copyrighted work as a whole. And number four, the effect of the use upon the potential market for or value of 
the copyrighted work. Now, of course, I cannot give a reliable analysis and opinion without reviewing the specific episodes in question. But what I can say is that if what you're doing is considered music criticism or education and not a mere substitute listening experience, and if you are only using short clips and not large chunks of the original material, then you're probably on the correct side of at least two or maybe three of those four factors. Now note, the I'm not making money from it argument is not a relevant point in this discussion. That fourth factor is about whether your use is actually taking money or the potential to make money away from the copyright owners. It has nothing to do with whether you, the user, the alleged infringer, are making money. So that's a common misconception. Now, I've not listened to those other podcasts, but maybe they are relying on fair use, or maybe they've just not been caught yet by a copyright owner who cares enough to take some kind of action. And it is entirely possible that they have had episodes taken down from their hosting account because of DMCA takedown notices and requests. And one music-centered podcast I did check out actually does focus on a single song per episode, and it breaks it down in a conversation with the actual creators, the artists and producers and writers of the song. So they probably do get specific permission, and because they're already talking to the artists and their managers who are in contact with labels and publishers on a regular basis, it's probably not that big of a hurdle to do that. Now, the other thing I want to say is, if you do decide to proceed with this kind of a show, it is pretty likely that your episodes will be tagged for infringement by the bots on Spotify and YouTube and Facebook. And even if you do satisfy fair use or even purchase licenses, those flags will come up and it's really a hassle to get them removed, even when you're in the right. So if it were me and I had this kind of show in mind, I'd probably look to take it to a good old-fashioned terrestrial broadcast radio station and try and not try to do it as a podcast because broadcast operates under different rules and they pay royalties through performing rights organizations, organizations like ASCAP and BMI and CSAC and GMR here in the U.S. And these organizations act as sort of clearinghouses for licensing in that medium, broadcast radio. And, and But the thing is, these organizations don't cover or give you all of the rights that you would need for a podcast, which is digital streaming and downloadable content, broadcast over the air versus streaming and digital downloads and things. So as much as I hate to be a wet blanket about this kind of thing, music rights owners have been pretty entrenched about this kind of thing. And there is currently no easy one-stop way to clear music for the kinds of use you're talking about. Now, if you are in the music industry, you're an artist or a writer or a publisher, maybe you should start stirring up this discussion in, in, the, in the music industry. I think it's time for some change, maybe some kind of a simple podcast licensing mechanism that makes it a little easier, especially for the kinds of shows like we're talking about, where what you're doing is criticism and education. It might be fair use, but it might not, and it can be a real challenge. So, so that's, that's sort of what I have to say about that. Now, I just want to say, by the way, Today I'm recording this on Thursday, the 19th of January. It's about 5 p.m. Pacific time and just a few more hours left. I've got about seven hours left for the, the doors being open for the special promotion I'm doing for Easy Legal for Podcasters, my online program that helps you do a lot of the legal stuff for yourself. So A, you know you are getting it done right because you're the one doing it and answering the questions and filling the forms and those kinds of things. But also, you can save some money. You're not having to hire lawyers to do the, the legal stuff to get your podcast up and running and legit. So it's called Easy Legal for Podcasters. Go to easylegalforpodcasters.com right now, today, Thursday the 19th, and you'll get Easy Legal for Podcasters at a tremendous discount. We're offering it for a special promotional price, but that's only good uh, until midnight and we'll probably be you know, doing other promotions again later in the year, but I can't say you're going to get it for a better price ever. So right now is the time to head on over to Easy Legal for Podcasters and, and pick up your copy today. It is a, it is a multi-video online training and you get all the tools and templates. We have modules breaking down your, your business legal structure, your team legal structure. We've got a, a module on your intellectual property strategies and we actually show you how to form your company, 
and hire you and onboard your team and do the right contracts for all of that. How to register your copyrights and register your trademarks and protect yourself and your intellectual property that way. And how to make smart contracts and deals with your, with your, well, with everybody, but especially the monetization side of things, how to, how to make a deal with an advertiser or a sponsor or with a network or, or an ad agency or those kinds of things. And we're adding new material and new content every, every month. We also do monthly conference calls and you also get all the forms and legal templates that you need to do the things that we are showing you how to do. So it's sort of like hiring a lawyer to talk in your ear and show you how to do things a little bit. And, and that's sort of what the goal here is, is to give you the tools to do it yourself. You know your business best. You know your podcast best. You know you best. And so who better to do the to do the things that you don't need a law degree in order to fill out that form. You know, sometimes you need some knowledge and information. That's what I'm here to provide you. And then you can you can work with Easy Legal for Podcasters to get these things done squared away so you can play the bigger game and you're not just playing not to lose. You know, there's so much of that sort of, it, you, you, it may be unconscious, but there's a little bit of timidity. You don't want to take big risks because if you're just not sure you've got all your legal dot legal eyes dotted and t's crossed you're just not going to play quite as bold and big of a game you're playing not to lose instead of playing to win so i'm going to here to help you play to win and i hope you do win i'm here to help podcasters like you and i would love it if you would get in on easy legal for podcasters right now while the time is while the time is ripe okay so that is it for this episode of the legit podcast pro podcast and I'll be back again in a couple of weeks. Oh, that's the other thing. I'm going to PodFest. I'm going to be speaking at PodFest 2023. So if you are listening to this in real time here in January, early, mid-January of 2023, come and see me at PodFest in Orlando next week. I'll be speaking on the subject of a prenup for your podcast and explaining why, yes, you do really need one. So I hope you can join me there as well. Go to PodFest expo.com if you haven't got tickets already and i hope to see you there in orlando and until next time i'm gordon firemark the podcast lawyer and this has been legit podcast pro see you again real soon